Treasurer, good morning. Good morning. You've said a, a recession in Australia is hard to avoid. I don't think I'm being alarming in asking this following question. Are we heading for a full-scale depression? Well, what I can tell you is that the Australian economy has approached this health crisis, which is having a significant economic impact from a position of strength. Uh, we are deploying all the means uh, at our disposal to support the economy. And yesterday, we saw over $100 billion of funding injected uh, into the financial system by the RBA and by the government. And we will get to the other side. We are building that bridge to the recovery phase. It will take some time. Uh, no medical professional can tell you, Michael, what the definitive end date for this is, uh, but we will do everything within our disposal at our means to support Australian jobs and Australian businesses. We've had the UN Secretary General overnight, Antonio Guterres, saying we are heading for a full-scale recession, uh, the likes of which the world has never seen. I asked about a depression. Is the government factoring in all possibilities here? Well, we obviously are very conscious of the massive impact this is having on the Australian economy. We make no apologies uh, for the uh, health uh, measures that we have taken, whether they are border, protect, uh, border protection measures with travel restrictions or whether they are social distancing rules. They're all designed to protect the Australian community, but they all have a massive economic impact. And Australia is not alone here, uh, Michael. You've seen what's happened in Italy. You just referred it in the at the introduction of your program. And we just don't know how long this will Go. The Prime Minister has prepared the Australian people uh, by saying that this will go for at least six months uh, and we will, of course, uh, continue to work day and night to support the economy and to support the public. If the government had to, would you nationalise private companies? Uh, that's not our focus right now. Our focus right now is on our second But down the track, package. Might, might it be? Look, um, obviously uh, the economic situation has got worse and we want Australian companies to get through this. Uh, we've announced uh, a number of significant measures designed to support the small and medium-sized business sectors, wa the wages of, of apprentices and the like, and we'll have a second package of measures also designed to support the economy. But together with yesterday's announcement, and you do not want to understate how significant yesterday's announcement was, we will continue to do what it takes uh, to support Australian jobs and businesses. OK, but uh, I, I just want to press the point for argument's sake if a company deemed essential to the operation of Australia, I cite, for instance, Virgin uh, was, it was in trouble. Would nationalisation temporary be an option for the government? Well, when it comes to the aviation sector, you're absolutely right. They, it is critical to the Australian economy uh, and, of course, vital to, to the Australian community and their ability to, to move both domestically and internationally. That's why uh, we announced a more than $700 million uh, package for the aviation sector, which involved uh, lower fees and, in fact, rebating fees that had already been paid. That uh, was done not on a company-specific basis but on a sector-wide approach uh, and will continue to support that sector in other sectors. But still, Qantas, as we've seen, sadly, has had to temporarily stand down 20,000 mm. members of its workforce despite that package from the government. So what next? What, what do you do now to help the aviation industry? Well, it's inevitable that the aviation sector, the tourism sector, the hospitality sector, the international education sector, the arts sector, they're all being uh, hit very badly by the impact of this coronavirus. Uh, that's why we're in, we have been announcing, we'll continue to announce a number of measures designed to support those companies. What we're focused on is getting to the other side of this. Uh, you know, to paraphrase uh, Winston Churchill, um, this is uh, not the, uh, the beginning uh, of the end. This is merely just the end of the beginning. There is a long way to go here and the Australian government will support Australian companies. Many of our viewers are absolutely terrified about losing their jobs, uh, the impact that will have on their families mm. in the months ahead. Uh, you uh, gave those $750 payments to welfare recipients and pensioners in your first round. Will you now consider direct payments to all Australian households? Well, I don't want to rule in or rule out particular measures because we've yet to finalise our second package. What I can say to you, though, Michael, is that the second package will be different in scope and nature to the first package. The first package uh, was a stimulus package which import with important measures, like you say, $750 cash payments to 6.5 million Australians, as well as investment incentives and the like. This second package is more about cushioning the blow for those Australians who may find themselves out of work, as well as continuing to support small 
small businesses because we want them to be able to meet the fixed costs, whether that's rent, whether that's water, whether that's electricity or indeed the wages bill, that they still will have to meet even though the customers may not come through the door. Many vulnerable members of the community are suffering in particular. Will the government consider a permanent increase to Newstart? I, again, I'm not um, going into the details of the particular package, but we've always been very clear, whether it's with package one or package two, we're not looking to structurally bake in long-term expenditure into the budget that we can't remove. This is going to be a temporary challenge. It may go for six months or more, but it's going to be a temporary challenge, and our focus is on targeted measures using the existing tax and transfer system and making it as simple and as easy as possible for Australians to get that support. OK, and finally, now you've got to go, Treasurer. Uh, you, the Prime Minister, Peter Dutton and other ministers, uh, urging people to, to stop hoarding, to stop panic buying, to stop behaving in unruly ways in our supermarket aisles. We've all seen the pictures. It is still happening, though. Baby nappies are the latest product to be in very short supply, and that is distressing so many mums and dads around the country. So what do you do next? Do you, do you call in the police? Do you, do you mobilise troops? How, how do you stop this panic buying from uh, continuing? Well, you're absolutely right. This panic buying is unacceptable. A Australia is a country that produces enough food for 75 million people, and we're a country of 25 million people. Uh, so we've got enough food. The the stock, uh, the supermarkets will continue to have uh, their shelves full of Australian food uh, as the uh, as the major retailers go about um, restocking uh, in light of this increased demand. And Australians need to respect each other. Uh, we have set up a working group uh, with the uh, with the federal government, with the ACCC, uh, with the major retailers, with the logistics suppliers, to ensure that there is no disruption to those supply chains. In fact, last night I was on the phone to the head of Coles and the head of Woolworths to talk about this very issue of security. Peter Dutton is very much focused on it as well. But let me tell you that um, the medical advice is that Australians do not need to stock up for weeks on end. They just need a couple. They just need food for a couple of days because we're not going to run out of food. We're not going to run out of medicines. People need to respect each other. This is a Team Australia moment. We need to look after one another. We don't need to engage in panic buying. Okay, Treasurer. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.